All right, welcome back to another Gundam Arsenal based video. Today will be a ranked match from season three. This is a bit later in the season, uh, about about one, not even a month ago, about three weeks ago. I recorded this match. Um, it is one of the last sets of matches that I played in season three, and I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break until about the mid range of season four. So sorry, don't expect to see any new videos from season four. But I will have a few from season 3. Anyway, the match has started, so let's talk about it. So this person started off with the standard start. He put out the Justice Knight Gundam with Andrew Waltfield. It's a pretty standard opening. Uh, it's a base attacker. It's a blue card. It will attack the base. On my end, I put out Mikazuki in the Lagoo. Just like in my last video, I've been using this one as my base attacker. It's really fast. You have to make a really quick decision if you see it get deployed. This person decided to put out Mei in the Earth 3 as their defender. They put it out right away, so I know who their, his main defender is, basically. So in response, he put out his own Mikazuki, but instead of the Lagu, he has it in the Hijir, Hijiraboshi? Hijiraboshi? I actually don't know what this Gundam is called. <laughs> actually, you should look and see what it's called. I, I don't know anything about Udyr Hunt. I know that's what it's from, and that's about it. So this guy activated his one of his tactical abilities, which lets him get a three bar of super meter, and he used it to attack my base directly. And because he is defending on his side with Mei or three, he was able to take out my Mikazuki. So that is my base attacker down. I have Shiro in the Easy Eight Gundam as my uh, attacker. And attackers don't do extra damage to blue units, so it's going to be a bit of a struggle to take this down. On the other side, I put out Ko Uraki in the GPO-1 as my defender for that side of the field on the right side. It is defending against Andrew Waldfield in the, in the Justice Knight Gundam. So, the Justice Knight is going to go down and I am going to immediately try to get my defender onto the left side. Because Mikazuki still has a good amount of health left, so I should try to get him over here and take him down. But you see here, I have Wufei in the Barbatos. They are doing excellent work. They do a lot of damage. My base actually went down, so I can't really do anything about it. I am basically lost. I basically lost one whole side of my base already, so I really have to work hard to get get over this. So we activated the Barbatos' ability, which boosts its range. Not range attack, but its short range attack and its mobility, so he can close in the range between units really quickly now. He has also Barbatos and Norris as his main attacker. He only has one attacker, which is pretty interesting. Barbatos Norris is a really, really good combination. You usually see Norris with really high damage melee units like the Barbatos. But in Season 3, a lot of people use Norris and the Shenlong. Shenlong is a really high cost unit, cost 7, uh, but it has basically the highest attack damage, short range attack damage in the game. And Norris is a low cost unit, so they're a really good combination. So I put out my Norris on the right side, and as you can see, it's a pretty fast unit as well. Shenlong has really high mobility, it has really high HP, and it has really high damage. He put out the Justice Knight, and he of course uses the Justice Knight's ability, Induction, which makes all units around it attack it. He's also using Duo and the Gushin Rebake. Gushin Rebake also has the Induction ability, which makes units attack it. But I have Wu Fei, and Wu Fei does a lot of damage in general. Wufei costs 5, the Barbatos costs 4. They're a really good combination. So yeah, even though Wufei doesn't get like a damage uh, a buff against blue units, he was able to take down Duo pretty quickly. And as a result of this, Wufei was going in for the attack against Mei in the Earth 3 on the opponent side, but he decided to remove Mei from that side of the field to get her away from Wufei. But in doing so, I saw that he did that, so it was wide open for me to use Mikazuki and Mulagu. 
but sadly, as soon as he saw Mikazuki and the Lagoo come out, he switched me back over to that side of the field. That's a strategy you see some people do every once in a while, where they will just switch sides and then switch right back. Uh, it basically resets the aggression of like targeting, so if, it was, if a unit was targeting your defender, you can do that and the targeting gets reset. So you see this guy, he's got his Mikazuki, they've made it through, uh, my defender wasn't ready, I wasn't really paying attention to it, and he closed the gap and he's attacking my base directly now. But I'm trying to rectify this by putting Kouraki on defense. So we got Ko, not Ko, sorry, <laughs> I was just looking at Ko, we have Shiro in the easy 8 he's going to be taking on Norris. We have Norris in the Shenlong, he's going to be attacking the base. And Ko Iraki has taken out his Mikazuki, so that's one less thing to worry about. And we're going to deploy Ko to the other side again, get him back on the base that we have left, and make sure he's defending it against the Gushi and Rebake and Duo. And this is something I'm noticing now that I'm watching this recording, I should have done this before. Uh, I actually have Ko Uraki in the GP01 using its special attack against the, the base attackers. This is something I should have been doing, but hindsight is 2020. As you can see, it does basically one shots it. It does the extra damage enough to like, instantly take out the unit no matter what. And we have the Shenlong Norris combination free to attack the base again. But red attackers don't do extra damage towards bases, so it's basically just extra damage for no real reason. And as you can see, this guy's not even going to bother defending against it. <laughs> because it's basically, if, he did, if he did that, he would basically just be sacrificing his defending unit. So we have Wufei and Norris duking it out. Wufei is a higher cost, he has higher stats than Norris. So Wufei can edge him out in a direct fight like this, especially if he has like the backup uh, support unit of the EZ-8, the ground type, Gundam that it summons. So we activated Shenlong's ability, which is its flamethrower. It's a single hit, direct damage ability. It does a lot of damage, especially towards units, but it does so-so damage against bases. And then we activated the special attack of the Shenlong against the base. Uh, once again, it doesn't do extra damage, but the match is coming to an end, might as well do as much damage as possible. Yeah, as you can see, it only does about 8% damage compared to the, uh, fifth, like the 10 to 15% damage that uh, a blue attacker would have done. But yeah, this match is basically over. I, I lost. I realized I lost at this point. Uh, the guy kind of got, got around my team. His combination is really interesting. It's three blue attackers, one defender, and one attacker. Uh, yeah, four, uh, three blue base attackers is a pretty hard, pretty hard team to, to attack and defend against, but I did my best. Uh, my team setup wasn't ready for it, I wasn't ready for it, and I lost, so that, that, that's how it goes sometimes. Anyway, that's going to be it for this match. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more Gundam Arsenal based content, please check in here. Uh, in English, I should mention, because this game is only in arcades in Japan. But if you're interested, I will be making more videos about it soon. And I hope to see you again next time. See you, and have a good day.